Well, welcome, Peter. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your video series? Sure. So in the past, I've written uh, articles on property development for the Property Investor magazine titled Property Development 101, and that's all the theory. But as I'm actually doing a development uh, at the moment, I thought it would be good to show how it works in practice. And rather than write more articles, I thought it would mean more if we had a series of videos explaining each of the steps involved in property development with uh, a property that I bought at 196 Esplanade, Port Nalunga South. Excellent. What a great idea. Well, can you start by giving us an idea of exactly where Port Nalunga South is? Sure. So Port Nalunga South is on the edge of the metropolitan area, uh, down south. Uh, and as the name suggests, it's on the beach. So it used to be a holiday town, uh, but now as the metropolitan area has grown, it is uh, it truly a part of the metropolitan area with metropolitan bus service servicing the area as well as the train. Okay, and can you tell us a little bit about the site itself? Yeah, sure. So as you'll be able to see on the screen, if we go to Google and then turn it to satellite view, you'll see a lovely uh, clean site. It wasn't like that when I bought it, and I'll show you what it used to look like very shortly. But one thing to notice there, number one, it is on the Esplanade. So to the left of that is sand and then the beach. And the, the other thing to notice is it's an irregular site. It is a, it's not a true rectangle. So that did bring in some challenges so far as building is concerned, which we will talk through uh, during the series of videos. And what are some of the details of the actual dimensions of the site? Sure. So as I said before, it's not a true uh, rectangle. So the front of the site is just over um, 24 metres long, so 24.38 metres to be exact, where we have allotment 21 at 8.38 metres wide at the front, and then allotment 22 and 23, 8 metres wide each. And at the back, they're basically um, just over half that width. So allotment 22 and 23 are 4.48 metres wide and allotment 21 is only 4.47 metres wide at the rear. And the, the sizes of the blocks range from 238 square metres, which is allotment 22 and 23, and then allotment 21 is 245 square metres. And what did the site look like before you began? All right, so if we go to realestate.com, then we can check out uh, what it looked like. So we've got the first picture. So there's a two-story house that was built in the 1970s. Uh, kitchen looks pretty good. So it was very livable, uh, but I thought the land was worth more than just the house and the land. We keep scrolling through. That's the upstairs. Looks very nice and neat. You can just see some glimpses of sea views from, from there. Uh, a swimming pool, which also brought more challenges because we had to fill in the swimming pool and not just fill it in and cover it up, but fill it into a standard where it was strong enough to be built upon. More photos of the inside. There's the a living room from downstairs. Doesn't look that flash. Um, there's a classic example of what the place looked like before. So it was built in the 70s and I don't think it's been refurbished since. That carpet looks like it was installed in the 70s and hasn't been replaced. Keep scrolling through. A bathroom looks like it was done in the 70s. There's a classic to, to tell uh, what condition a property is in. If you look at the kitchen and the bathroom photos, lovely view of the sea there from the front of the property. Some more photos of the backyard illustrating how large the backyard is. And another view from the front. And there is the floor plan. So that's what the house looked like when I bought it. And what do you think it's going to look like once it's finished? Well, if we look at this 3D render, I think it looks pretty good. So we have three what we call in South Australia road dwellings. So they're all attached. You can see there are three sets of double garages, three sets of front doors, and three sets of balconies. So even though they're all attached, they will all be what we call Torrance Title, where everybody owns their own land and owns their own building. 
Well, from the street front, they definitely look amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about the design that the architect had come up with in the beginning? Yeah, so a very good friend of mine is an architect, um, and he got to, uh, his pencil and put it to paper and started doing some designs. And as we can see here on the ground floor, we have the bedrooms downstairs, and we did that deliberately so we could have the living area upstairs because the views are very good from upstairs. Um, and generally, if you're building, you wouldn't build the living and the kitchen upstairs because people, one of the reasons is people would have to trudge up and down the stairs for their groceries. But when you have a view such as this, there is an exception. So downstairs, basically for all three, we have three bedrooms, a family room at the back, and originally we had a, a double carport. And then when you look at uh, this page here, you can see what the upstairs looks like. So we've got the balcony, the living, the kitchen, plus another bedroom at the back. And you'll notice there's a room at the front, which is called a nook. I'll explain that a little bit further shortly. But basically we've got four bedrooms, two bathrooms, uh, four bedrooms, two living areas, and um, two bathrooms in most of them. And then what further refinements did you make? Right, so after that was done, I gave it to the uh, David Thompson, the building designer, who will be on uh, later on in the series of videos. And he, uh, we came up with some uh, excellent ideas. Firstly, if we look at page three of 18 of his plans, what used to be a carport is now a garage because generally people like a covered area for storage as well as storing their cars. So we were able go, to go back during the planning approval process and get an amendment to enclose our carports to call them garages. And then if we look at the next page, page four of 18 of the plans, you'll see what used to be called a nook is a study. It's exactly the same area, but we've named it something different. So now we can call it four bedrooms and a study rather than just four bedrooms and a nook because number one nobody knows what a nook is and number two the perception of a nook is that it is very small so they were a couple of the major changes uh, that we made and it's really just naming changes not much in the design but you know people's perception is their reality so uh, we felt from a marketing point of view it would be a better idea to call the nooks a study and from a practical point of view it would be much better to have enclosed garages rather than carports. Well, that definitely makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Um, is there anything else you would like to add or say about the property? No, look, I'm really looking forward to um, the progress of the development, uh, really looking forward to showing um, people how it's done in real life. We'll have a number of the my team that were involved in the project, including the builder, Pellegrino Constructions, the architect, the building designer, my accountant who talks about uh, the tax implications of either selling them at, uh, or renting them, the, the property manager, the town planner. So it's not just me, there will be a number of experts talking about their particular field of expertise. And what I'm really looking forward to is having a beer on the balcony before Christmas. Sounds perfect. Well, don't forget my invite, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. Thank you very much.